This is Sarah. She makes music as Desolatum. I'm Poe. I make music as Skin. And together, we are High Grove. We've worked with tape for six years and counting. We get a lot of questions, so we decided to write these two zines, Loops, a beginner's guide, and Loops, an intermediate guide. Sarah's going to demonstrate while I walk you through the zines. By the end of this workshop, you should be able to make a variety of loops and know a bit more about tape in general. The first zine starts off with a master list of everything you'll need to make all kinds of tape loops. You'll need pre-recorded tapes so you don't mind destroying. Make sure they have screws. Some tapes are sonic weld together and it's really hard to break them apart. A small Phillips head screwdriver. Sticky tape. Super glue for modifying tape shells. Something to cut tape with. Either scissors or a knife and a cut mat. Containers to keep all the small parts together. A white pencil to mark measurements, though this is more helpful for reel-to-reel -reel tape. And a tape player. Any tape player as long as it mostly works. Alright, I'm going to walk you through, step by step, how to make a basic triangle tape loop while Sarah demonstrates. Before you start, you should also get a ruler or a tape measure, something I completely forgot to mention in my master list. Whoops. Anyway, all you need for basic tape loops is a measuring device of some sort, a mini Phillips head screwdriver, or a flathead if you've got one of the rare cassettes with only four flathead screws, a completely rewound cassette with sound on it. Don't forget to rewind, it's really annoying if you have to unspool the tape to start. Scotch tape, scissors, or your cut tool of choice. Unscrew the tape and put the screws somewhere safe. Take the tape apart and get rid of the little protective plastic liners. You don't really need them. Cut the wheel clean off from the leader. The little plastic film before the tape starts is called the leader. You want to make sure that the wheel has none of it left on it. Cut the leader from the tape and then cut yourself a decent length of tape. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to measure if it's off the roll. A basic triangle loop measures in at 22 to 23 centimeters or 8.5 to 9 inches. Sarah's cutting it closer to the 22 centimeter side. Cut yourself a small piece of scotch tape. The width has to be smaller than the width of the tape, and it should be just long enough to tape them together firmly without being so long that your loop kind of has like a corner in it. 
Working with this stuff can sometimes be a little frustrating. You're going to want to tape the inside of the loop. So you'll be taping the underside of one side to the underside of the other side. Leaving a loop with no visible scotch tape. Now you need to put it back into the shell. There's no one way to do this. I like to try and get it all lined up with the teeth and the pressure pad on the bottom before I try and do this part with the wheels. Sarah usually does the teeth part last. Because she used the smaller side of the measurement, it's fitting a little tight in the case and she's having trouble getting it in. But you can sometimes kind of fix that problem by making the tape go between the tape guides, those little wheels on the bottom, and the pegs on the bottom next to them, instead of around both of them. So there's these little teeth on the bottom of the tape shell, and the tape needs to be behind it, or else it'll get crushed when you close it back up, and the tape won't run properly. So once it's all in there properly, close the shell back up carefully, screw it shut, and try it out. There it is, a basic triangle loop. Really easy to make and it holds five seconds of audio. Before we try out the loop, I just wanted to take a second to mention tabs. All tapes have a spot for read and write protection on the top. This is a blank tape made to be recorded on so the tabs are in, ready to go. But if you're making loops out of a tape that an artist put out like this flint tape, the tabs will be out. So when you try and press the record button on your tape player, it won't work at all. You either need to put a piece of tape over where the tabs are, or you can put a piece of tape here, on this little piece of plastic that checks for tabs on your tape player. If you tape it here, then you can record on any tape you want. Okay, now let's listen to the loop Sarah made.
She's got great loop luck. I swear nine times out of ten, Sarah makes a perfect loop. Ridiculous. Anyways, on to the next. The next loop is a trapezoid loop. It's pretty much exactly the same as the triangle loop, but it wraps around both wheels instead of just the one, and you get an extra second of audio because of that. Because the process is pretty much the same as the last, we're just going to watch Sarah do it this time. There you go. A nice little trapezoid loop. Okay, let's hear it. Let's just jump into the next one. Sarah's going to show you how to make a Mobius loop. Based on a Mobius strip, a Mobius loop is made exactly the same way as a triangle loop, except when you tape it together, you give it a half turn, so there's a single twist in your loop. And then when you play this loop back, it plays the first two tracks, and then it twists and plays the last two tracks, and then back again continuously.
So this is how you would normally tape a loop. But for a Mobius, keeping one hand steady, you're going to want to flip the other end once. 180, not 360. It's just a half turn. And then tape it together. So it's got a single twist in the loop like this. Because this tape is already twisted, this one can be a little bit hard to get back into the shell without it curling in on itself. So she got it in the shell, but the part where it twists is behind the teeth. That's a bad spot for it. The tape should only be twisting or flipping in the top part of the case where the wheels are, where it has room to turn around. There's not enough room at the bottom where the tape head and the pickup wheel are. It'll probably just break the tape if it tries to twist there.
Once you've got the twist in the right spot and the case put back together, it's time to try the loop. We finish off this zine by talking about how tape works. I'm not going to get into the technical physics behind tape recording right now, but if you don't know how tracks on a tape work, you might have been confused about what I meant when I said the Mobius plays the first two and then the last two tracks, so I will definitely explain that part. So say this tape is a C60. That means it can fit 60 minutes worth of music on it when you play it in a standard tape player. 30 minutes on side A and then you flip it over to play 30 minutes on side B. There are four tracks on all compact cassette tape. They play as left and right, front and left and right, back tracks on a standard player. But there are also four track players that allow you to play all four tracks in one direction at once. The main tape player we use in this workshop is a four track player. The drawback to this is you only get 30 minutes on a C60 tape. Because you aren't flipping the tape at all, you only get the length of the one direction. The benefit to this is you can use tape like samplers. So you can record different audio to all four tracks and bring each one in and out whenever you want. This is the technique that Sarah and I use when we play with tape loops. This is the four track we're using today. It's a Tascam MFP-01. When you put a cassette into a tape player, the tape passes by the erase head first, the record head, and then the playback head, and then feeds through the little cap stand, which is this little spinning metal rod, and the take-up wheel, the little ru rubber wheel behind it. Most tape players have a combined record and play head, like mine. If you look, you can actually see the four black lines on the tape head. They correspond to the four tracks of the tape. The erase head has them too. This is a Walkman. It's just a standard tape player, so it can only play two tracks at a time. You can see the two blue lines for where it reads the tracks on the tape. You'll also notice this tape player doesn't have an erase head. That's because it doesn't have a record function. This one is strictly a tape player. Hey, we did it. We finished the first scene. That means you should be able to make three types of basic loops. We wrote the intermediate zine a little bit differently. It's not quite as technical, and it talks a bit about the history of tape methods as well as some of the ways we use it creatively. But there is one specific loop in here that I think is a perfect way to bridge the gap between beginner and more advanced loops, and that's the Chandler loop. Sarah's going to show you one variation, and I'm going to show you the other. The Chandler loop is 37.2 centimeters, or 14.65 inches. This measurement is way more precise than the others I've mentioned because the loop is named after David Chandler, and according to him, this is the ideal length for this loop. He's an experimental electronic artist that goes by Solenoid and Mr. Pharmacist, and he handed out a hundred of these loops marked open source to touring bands in the 90s. It earned him kind of a small cult following, and seems like everyone who makes loops knows about this loop. The Chandler loop is 8 seconds long, and it gets used to working with longer tape and putting it in the shell in an odd shape.
Let's hear it. Probably the most asked question we get is, how do I make the loop longer? Chandler is about as long as you're going to get without modifying the tape shell. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to make a modified Chandler. I specifically wanted to be the one to show you how to do this because my hands are a lot less steady than Sarah's, and I am also a lot less patient than Sarah. But I am still capable of doing these loops, it just takes me a bit longer, and I use some tricks that might be useful to you. It was taking me an embarrassingly long time to get this into the shell, so we're just going to start with it in. <laughs> I didn't use a ruler when I cut the tape, I just chose a random length that seemed good enough, and I started by putting it down in the shape of a chandler. Then I grabbed a bunch of little wheels and pushed the tape into a shape that I liked with them until it fit into the shell. Once you're happy with them, you're going to want to mark where the wheels are on the shell. I highly advise taking a photo before you do this part, so you have a reference of where everything is before you potentially screw it all up. Once you've marked the wheels and the tape is out of the shell, super glue a dot. Just a dot. I used way too much on the first wheel by accident, but that's okay. Just keep doing it until all the wheels are in place. Now it's time to let it dry. Make sure it dries fully. The worst feeling is tape getting stuck to super glue in the shell and having to restart everything. While the glue was drying, I made a little tape loop for a micro cassette. Micro cassettes have always been my personal favorite. They have a way of making everything sound completely devastating.
All right, glue's dry. I've got the tape in the teeth. And because this tape won't stop curling on me, I'm using a marker to keep it straight so I can pull it around to make it a little easier. Okay, one more time. Fiftieth tries the charm. So once I've got it to a spot where it's almost done, and I will probably cry if it falls apart again, I like to put the back of the tape shell on top of whatever's already in place so that I don't have to worry about it falling apart while I try and get the tape around these really finicky corners. And I did it! Honestly, this loop is really loose, and if I needed it to be sturdier, I would probably cut off the tiniest bit so it plays more reliably, but for now, let's just test it. So it works for the most part, and now you know how to modify a tape shell, so you can apply that to any other loop you want. We have a ton of these small wheels because we have a ton of tapes, but I've seen people do this with thumbtacks, plastic beads, the sticks of q-tips. As long as it fits in the shell and tape won't get stuck on it, try it. These are some examples of my loops on the left and Sarah's loops on the right. Mostly, we just want to encourage people to experiment. The 
The rest of the zine talks about Rippertronics, tape delay, and open loops. If you've ever seen us play a show, you'd know we love open loops. Like really, really, really love open loops. There was even a period of time where Sarah hammered nails into our living room wall to run new loop formations whenever she wanted. Open loops are pretty much exactly what they look like. It's just loose tape. And you can run it loose in certain tape players, but the longer it gets, the trickier it gets, and you have to watch over it actively. To make it a little bit easier, we've been sawing the tops off of cassettes. Really all you need is the bottom mechanism and three screws for it to be able to run and stay shut. And then all you have to do is string up the loose end around something so that it has enough tension to play. We've also tried this by cutting holes in the top and sides too, and it also works. I think that pretty much covers it. We hope this inspires people to try working with tape. It's an incredibly versatile medium. It can be financially accessible if you know where to look. I found a good chunk of my tape collection on the street. And it can also be a really good place to start making music. We wrote these zines for the Desolatum Patreon, where we talk on Discord, send out monthly packages, and post early access music. The zines are on the Sloan Distro Bandcamp from now on. Advanced scene coming soon. Thanks for watching our workshop. I hope you learned something. <laughs>